and two in a familiar pattern, death stalks the drivers. Shorty Cantlin, after 40 laps, is tapped for his final curtain. Death, not satisfied with the effects of this tragic impact. Suddenly there's a skid, and Floyd Roberts smashes in the box once his car, setting it ablaze. Chet Miller crashes through the infield fence and turns turtle. A triple crack-up. Miller is pinned beneath his car. Swanson is thrown clear, and Roberts, mortally hurt, has driven his last race. As flames complete their work of destruction, the mad race goes on before the crowd of 145,000. With magnificent skill, Roger Ward spins on the backstretch. The way clear, Boyd and Vukovic move right along, but Al Keller spins into them from the inside. Vukovic is thrown over the rail, flipping helplessly. From a point directly opposite the bridge, the incident looked like this. Boyd's car, number 39, is thrown on its back and skids to a stop. Boyd is trapped underneath. Keller, in the car that started it all, waves frantically to warn other drivers. Ed Opelous disaster struck on the third turn of the very first lap, when Ed Elysian skidded while trying to grab the lead. He touched off a 12-car jam-up in which driver Pat O'Connor was killed and several others injured. When we cut down to slow motion, you can see O'Connor's car flipping over in horrible detail. He didn't have a chance. Jerry Unser's car jumped the wall, but he escaped with only a dislocated shoulder. The chain reaction collision on Memorial Day was the worst in the long history of the Indianapolis 500-mile race. As the green flag dropped, Clark jumped into a substantial lead. And as Clark was beginning his third lap, a young sports car driver named Dave McDonald, in a radically designed car, lost control, coming off the northwest turn, and slammed into the inside wall. An hour later, the announcement was made at the track. The deepest regret that we make this announcement. Driver, Driver Eddie Sachs was killed instantly. Dave McDonald would die later that afternoon. a ground effect or Indianapolis car Gordon Smiley going turn three at this point suddenly the car veers right through the left and slams into that wall probably at more than 200 miles an hour Gordon Smiley died instantly in this accident a horrific accident again you see the car beginning to slide at this point he corrects the slide and the car goes in exactly the 
way that the front wheels are pointing and slams almost head on into the wall. The compression of the car at that speed, it's almost like an aircraft accident, almost that of a, a ballistic missile with fuel, oil, and the car totally destructing itself. Modern racing car is a deformable structure, but man was never designed to live through an accident such as this. This, sadly, is what's happened at Indianapolis. Came here having run more than 500 laps and had this accident. And this was an unusual accident. We can see he's very low down inside the apron in turn one. He'd only been running 175 miles an hour. He lost control of the car and made heavy contact with the outside wall. All the damage was done right there. The car then went into turn two. But Jovi Marcello did suffer very severe injuries. We see him coming off the wall here. Heavy suspension damage, heavy damage to the tub. But Jovi Marcello... A very unfortunate incident. The veteran driver in the yellow and green Minard lost control of his car at more than 230 miles an hour as he entered the second turn. The blown rear tyre on the right was initially blamed for the crash in which the 37-year-old's car went into a half spin and travelled 420 feet before it smashed into the wall, continuing to slide a further 360 feet with parts of the vehicle flying off. Track officials said Brayton was unconscious at the scene and was pronounced dead at a local hospital four hours later. Brayton drove in 148 Indy car races and had qualified for his 15th Indy 500. He's the 25th driver to be killed during practice for the event.